better watch out if you ignite him He's a road ahead of full prophecy To be the greatest beast the world has ever seen I feed him every day like the bones clean I feed him all the hate and he grows me And he gets caught through a big piss off quick And if you cross him you might drop dead Metaphorically of course said to live this war Never getting bored loves the blood and gore Always wanting more freedom from the source They don't really understand until they feel the force apart And if you start shit you'll be heartless in the darkness Torn apart quick you left scars ripped you'll be chewed up and discarded and this world ain't right, won't accept it Negative energy, I expect it Once it's in your mind, it's infectious So fight for your life and reject it You better give me space, I'm Good afternoon, good afternoon. This is the Minister ML Kimball coming to you live with Word on the Street. And uh, listen, I want you guys to like, share, and comment on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have not done so. Those of you that have recently joined our channel, I want to thank you for all of your support. Don't forget to join us over on Patreon uh, and become a member. You have different choices you can choose from from our memberships uh, that you can choose from and, and join our partnership and what we're trying to do here on this channel. Uh, this is something that I dread having to actually review because obviously this is something that has already been put out in public knowledge, but we've, we're gonna talk about it. I mean, Word on the Street is all about discussing and talking about what has already been public knowledge and just understand that the views expressed in this broadcast is strictly my own opinions, my own views, uh, we are insured and bonded, and the reality of it is we're not going to let this go by without talking about it and discussing it. Because the bottom line is, I can't believe the amount of so-called Christians and church folks that are defending the fact that this story has a lot more to do with not only the, uh, the secret scamified lifestyle of the pastor, a known pastor, but we're just skating past what the scripture says in regards to what is being alleged. Now, what am I talking about? I'm gonna share my screen with you all real fast so you guys can see exactly what is already in public knowledge. Public, public, uh, you know, this is all public knowledge. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the pastor, Larry Reed. And there's some really, 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 really disgusting uh, horrible things that have been released to the public and what I have an issue with is the fact that this is the same guy that decided that he was going to destroy and throw out information about Bishop T.D. Jakes with no evidence and no receipts 
And yet there's been evidence and receipts released about what he himself was being involved in. And now I'm not going to go into all of the things that he was involved in, but you guys know, because I'm going to keep, I'm going to attach to this video here so you can see yourself what is being alleged. And my question to the Christians are, why are you defending this? Why are you saying that there's nothing wrong with this if we know what the scripture says? Now, what am I talking about when it comes to the scripture? Well, we're going to take a look here. What does the Bible say in regards to what this is being, what is being alleged here? Uh, Leviticus chapter 18, verse number 21 says, and you shall not let any of your seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shall you profane the name of Yahuwah. I am Yahuwah. You shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. So my question is, the church folks that are okay with this behavior and defending this ridiculous behavior, what are you serving? Because if you are claiming that you're serving the Most High, then you cannot sit back here and tell me that you're going to justify what has been alleged. Now, again, this is all allegations. And the problem is, Mr. Reed has been very, very quiet since these allegations have come out. And yet there's evidence between, behind this, uh, these allegations. This is not something that I'm making up. I don't slander people's name. I don't want to slander people's name. And I really don't want to have to review stories like this especially when it comes to leaders. But if we're going to live like a scam and live not like the Bible requires us to live and then utilize and take money from people that are believing and trusting in the message, it makes us all look bad as leaders. So the reality of it is, I hope that this is not true. I hope that these allegations are going to be proved that's not true. But as I can see right now, it looks like it's evidence. And at the end of the day, it is sad and disgusting. We must understand that regardless of if there were anybody underage involved in this, yes, that is just as bad. But we need to also talk about what are we doing when it comes to the scripture. The scripture tells us one thing. So I don't care what public opinion accepts. If you can't call yourself serving the most high, if you're going to skate past what the scripture says when it comes down to uh, uh, what is considered an abomination or not. Now, with that being said, I want you to like this video, share this video, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And like I said, I'm going to put the video right in. Just continue to watch here and you'll see what is being alleged. And like I said, I hope to goodness that this is not true, because if so, this is not yet another blow that's going to be towards the Christian church and the people of the Most High, because this is what we are accepting today. This is what's being accepted as okay, even though he said himself that he's not okay with it. I am the minister, ML Kimball. Be blessed. After working on a seven-part series on spiritual abuse, I've gained a wealth of knowledge and a new perspective. But most of all, it's caused me to clearly see how silence is complicity. Thus, my silence, though serving me, has not served the masses. So as the universe wills, I am presented an opportunity to come clean. Let me start by apologizing to all that have been affected by what I'm about to address, but suffered long because of my silence. I must also seize the moment to offer my apologies to one person in particular, Elisa Dunn. I know what it is to play a part in a network where victims were created. And to be honest with you, I didn't say anything at all. And it's one of my biggest regrets. It's the reason why I'm really doing this video. Specifically, there are two people that I carry in my heart because I should have spoke up and I didn't. And though I think it's too late to stir the waters now, I want to say to you two specifically, I am so sorry. It will be self-explanatory by the end of this episode why I needed to apologize to Lisa. And by the way, hi, my name is Vincent Terrell Hill. Some call me Buddha. Some call me V. Terrell Hill. And for some of you, you call me Elder Vincent Terrell Hill. I worked with Larry Reed from Larry Reed Live from 2003 to 2018. At that time, I was everything from a personal assistant, executive assistant, 
I traveled statewide and internationally, but most importantly, I am the creator and originator of the Larry Reed Live Show. Throughout those 15 years, 13 years were spent in a sexual relationship with Larry Reed. For a while, I believed I was the only one, or rather, the only man. However, Larry made me aware after our sexual relationship was over, I wasn't. I will disclose the other men in the church he's had some sort of sexual relationship with outside of me as we move forward. Most of what I say in this video is provable. Everything else I saw with my own eyes are those directly connected to it told me. None of this is secondhand information. You did take my comment on well, how many years in your ass. So it's my students in you. Yes. While he was married, pastoring, traveling the road, working with me on Larry Reed Live, we maintained an ongoing sexual relationship. That, to my knowledge, only he, Shamako Bryant, and myself was aware of from 2005 to approximately 2017 when I cut off the sexual relationship. Shamako didn't like our relationship. I don't know about you, love, of course, but what you decided him to get like I wish I was More on Shamako later. Now you may ask, where did I get these audio clips from? Late night on January the 15th, 2023, Larry drove to my house to have a conversation with me months after him and I stopped communicating because he halted payment on an arrangement agreed upon for years of work I did during my 13 years of service with Larry, the Breakthrough Church, Breakthrough Temple, and all of the iterations thereof, including Larry Live. If you remember January the 15th, 2023, you may also remember Levantre Andrews. He was being interviewed by Tasha Kay, premiering in parts on YouTube, but in full on her website that same night. That night, he texted me out of nowhere wanting to talk and saying he will pay me my money that he owes me. Now, one might feel it was hush money. However, he attributed his desire to talk to a dream he had, and he felt led to text me and to meet with me. Now, speaking of Levantre Andrews, let's go ahead and air this out real quick. If honest, Levantre and Larry would corroborate this one thing. I had no idea Levantre had accused Larry of molesting him two years later. To this day, I haven't received a clear answer from Larry or anyone in Larry's camp why no one told me when I was literally the guy that handled all of the, or most of the fires, rather, in the church. When Larry finally told me what happened around 2017 or something like that, 16 or 17, approximately 16 or 17, it was a very super generic story that I believed Levantre was lying because I remember Levantre being a lying teenager in the church. So I just chucked it off and went on about my business. After leaving the Larry Live community in 2018, someone prompted me, you need to go speak to Levantre. He feels like you helped Larry cover up his story. And I said, huh? So I reached out to Levantre just simply to let him know I didn't find out to many years later, only to realize that phone call brought me more than what I bargained for. Once Levantre gave me his side of the story, significant parts of it startled me because it mirrored the same sexual experiences I had with Larry Reed. See, Larry is a voyeur. He loves to see people naked. Juan recounts a time that Larry uh, purchased him new underwear and wanted to see him in the Levantre underwear. recounted a time where Larry asked him to clean up his room in his underwear. What Levantre didn't know up until now 
and he still doesn't know he's hearing this while you're hearing this. I knew he was telling the truth the whole time. Because I too was requested by Larry to do the exact same thing many a times. Although I wasn't there, I said to Larry, as it relates to Levantre, here's what I said to Larry. Either you did something to Levantre or you provided the inappropriate details of your bedroom fetishes to a young member in the church. Either way, you are dirty dog wrong. One of the things that always bothers me about this Levantre is one thing and one thing only. When I talked to him back in 1718, he said something um, that was eerily similar to our experience. And I asked you about it and you said that you told him some stuff and yada yada. yada. So in my mind, uh, even if that was just that, there was already a line crossed. Do you think maybe you can just let let him have this and just let him filter out, filter out. So interesting to see. Then what was talking about in the And and Marco said, he said, he said, I know you y'all gonna be talking about other stuff. He said, but you need to ask me some more. He said, and stuff like that. There's been some good at what what to do. But I don't think that would bode well in court because that admission could be seen as, well, if he was having an improper relationship with the assistant, why, why couldn't he have an improper relationship with the young, with the drunk? So it's, that's, that's a lot. It shouldn't have happened. And I told Larry explicitly, leave that boy alone. Now let me go deeper. No abuser operates alone. Right? He or she always has a network of people to help them be who and how they are, which is a monster. No abuser operates alone. There is always a network of people aiding and hiding their secrets and abetting in their schemes and dirty work. If you know you are or were a part of such a network, get out while you can. Shamako Bryant, though he appears nice, is not innocent. In my opinion, you know what's worse than someone who stabs you in the back? That same person who hides the knife and helps you clean the wound. Shamako and Larry were boyfriends before I even got in the picture in 2003. And in my opinion, still maintain some sort of romantic understanding or committed relationship. For those who were around in the church days, Mako moved out, and right after he moved out to his own apartment, I moved in to Larry's house. Mako did not like the fact that I was there because he knew Larry would eventually not keep his hands to himself, and he couldn't do anything about it. So guess who had to pay for it because he could not control Larry? I did. Shamako found out about Larry and I when I told him in 2005 during a ride back from Raleigh to Fedville, and here is how it happened. Prior to that, Mako and I, wanting to see each other naked, met at the then church musician's house, Antoine Shepard, while he was out of town. Mako, for whatever reason, had a key to Antoine's house, so we went there, stripped naked. We were young and dumb, giddy and childish, but hey, we did it. I thought it was a good time. We didn't touch each other at the time. We just saw each other naked. However, what I thought was Mako being fun and my friend in reality was him fishing for information on whether or not Larry and I was having sex. He was willing to do anything to find out. And of course, I told it because at the time I didn't know any better. Mako, as late as 2021, is still the same way, sneaky and sexually deviant. Yes, we flirted. We. I'm not, I'm not a superstar in this. He fondled me all the time, playing around, touching me in areas he shouldn't touch me. 
We've exchanged nudes. The Thursday before the Reformation experience in 2021, Mako masturbated in front of me on FaceTime while I watched. He asked me of my thoughts of a foursome between Larry, Kendall, Locklear, and myself. He said it was a fantasy of his. Well, I guess that's a five some or a quadruple it or whatever. It's five. He even admitted by being caught by Nathan Locklear's now incarcerated son, Day Day, at a meetup, a gay meetup spot off of Cheshire Bridge Road. Is Mako sweeter acting, portraying way more innocent in comparison to Larry Reed? Yes. But is he worse than Larry Reed, if you ask me? Absolutely. Now, I need to stop to say sorry to Latrice and Lisa. While at this time you both were being dogged by your ex-husbands for what y'all did or were doing, they did it first and literally continued to do it right up under your noses. And he was going in like, only thing we got in common is this X, Y, Z and this, right, this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? That's not a good look. And the way you're trying to say, I'm the queen of the family, that, that was degrading. It was disrespectful. The reality is that I don't, their timeline makes no sense to me. Um, when they say the relationship started and